Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm actually going to introduce three videos. In fact, a video series. As you know, I've been on a mission to find the perfect customs software for customs declarations. And I've spoken to quite a few companies now about their solution and about what they can offer to customers like myself who lodges customs declarations on a daily basis. And we talked a lot about automation. We talked a lot about service offering. We had these fixed criteria that we wanted to check if, if, if that company would be the suitable, um, suitable provider of my software. And we're nearing the end now. And as I have spoken to many software providers, some who didn't want to come on video, so it was kind of, you know, off the record. And I'm narrowing down on my conclusion. I thought, what about if I spoke instead of speaking to the, the software houses, I spoke to the users. I spoke to those intermediate other customs experts, customs managers who also have experience with software, who may be in the market to answer the question of their client, which software shall I use? The same question we've been trying to get an answer to by holding all these interviews. If we are customs professionals, what are we advising? What are we saying to our customers? Go for this software, go for that software. So I wanted to get inspired. I wanted to know what others do. What other customs managers, customs experts, customs gurus say to their clients and what is their view on the world and the state of play of custom software in the year 2024? So I asked them and I got a lot of responses back, but the most noteworthy one was Dale. Dale took the time to not only have one you know, short meeting with me, but to answer all of my questions on custom software. And in fact, what was supposed to be a 10 minute conversation turned into an almost an hour conversation. And it was so insightful, so useful. And I'm sure I got a lot out of it. I'm sure you're gonna get a lot out of it too. But because it is an hour long, I've decided to split it into three parts. So this is the introduction to the first part. So we're gonna do a three part series, if you want, of our, my conversation with Dale Fletcher. The first one is about navigating the complexities of custom software declaration. So we're going to look at understanding the landscape and, and challenges in the delivery of customs declaration. The second video is going to be about vendor responsiveness in real world applications. So we're going to look at things like vendor engagement and testing in uh, testing real world scenarios or company scenarios with that software and making sure it then works. And the third part will be the, the role of AI in customs declaration software and custom software in general, as well as special procedures. So AI and future research and account and vendor accountability as well. All of that to say, um, it, we're, we're narrowing down on, on my final decision. And I'm expecting that uh, the interview with Dale is gonna be the last part of this series. And then I'm gonna make my decision. So if you are willing to explore what customs managers have say, are saying about custom software today um, and to see a little bit what the challenges were when solicitating or trying to find out what, what custom software to use, you're not going to come with me to my interview with, with Dale. Now, this stops abruptly uh, because it's a three-part session that just was recorded in one, so don't be alarmed if out of the sudden the session stops. Uh, it will then pick up um, in the following video and so on. So if you're ready to go, here is part one of my conversation with Dale. Um, I hope you enjoy. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share with others. Great, let's go. Well, hello everyone. And thank you for checking into the channel again. Well, you know by now what we're all about right now. We have Iron Cloud focused on one thing and that is to find out our next best in class customs declaration software not custom software declaration software yeah we are filing customs declarations for quite a few companies and we need efficient software good software that is quick that does the job and that 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 meets the requirements um as well and for that we launched a survey because there are quite a few 
that offer such a such a software. But how do we benchmark them? How do we know which one is the one for us? And can we even benchmark those software providers? Well, we certainly will do a try. And we've had a first range of interviews. And not only do we ask the software houses to come on and say their piece, but also we've invited you, the, the listeners, the watchers, uh, those who are advising companies, those that, that, that you know, benchmark the software themselves to come on and have a say. And you responded to the call. And I'll thank you very much for it. And I am therefore so pleased to have Dale with me. Dale Fletcher has has responded to the call for for information, the request for uh, an interview, a discussion. And Dale will tell us a little bit more about his experience with the customs declaration software. I can't wait. It will be such an exciting interview. Dale, would you like to say hello to everyone? Hello, nice to meet you. I'm glad to be of some service uh, with Arne. I think this is a really excellent uh, survey study he's doing, long overdue. So yes, I think the more we can all help, uh, hopefully the better it will be good yeah. for everybody to, to, to get a view on what's going on out there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we have, um, prior to, to us coming on board, we have had a bit of a chat and we've kind of given it a bit of a structure. So there's some questions and some themes that we want to that we want to discuss and are also close to your heart. So um, it's a set of, of, of questions that, that we've prepared. So let's see what uh, what you think about customs declaration um, software in, in the UK and the survey that we're doing. Generally, let's start with uh, your general experience, if you don't mind, with the customs declaration software. So first of all, maybe to start us off with, what inspired you to, to watch the video series uh, on, on customs declaration software that we're running? Well, I was actually looking for a software for a particular scenario for a client, and I just happened to to come across your, your videos. I thought this is really interesting. You know, somebody for the first time who's actually reviewing the market because there are so many new entrants. They're all offering uh, the world. And, you know, it's not until you actually start to look into it do you realize what they don't offer and what they do offer. And then even sometimes when you're reading the information, it's not really clear what they don't offer. So only when you start the conversation going and you get into quite um, a few meetings, do you realize that you know certain, certain features are not available mm -hmm. or you have to do an awful lot of the work yourself, um, such as connectivity of different systems, which um, you know is an open-ended uh, cost factor. So these are things that when I saw your particular uh, study and I've seen the three different uh, videos that you produced so far, uh, I really was tempted to get, you know, as I've done, to get involved to say, look, you know, I've got some thoughts on, on certain parties that I've contacted, sent you an email. And from that, obviously, you made contact straight away. So, yeah, really glad that you're clearly listening to uh, practitioners like myself in the marketplace who quite frankly are really struggling in this area and we're the professionals so what the end you know SMEs in particular are trying to find it must be very very difficult for them yeah. to choose the right package um, for their needs. Mm -hmm. I've had the same experience um, and, and you will see through the interviews the, the interviews are generally all, all positive as you can imagine um, but um, but yeah, to make sense of, of whether that actually meets the needs is, is always challenging. So I agree with you. Tell us a little bit about who you are and, and what you do and, and why do you care about, I mean, you already mentioned it, but why do you care in particular about custom declaration software? Maybe a bit more detail. Yeah, well, basically, um, we focus uh, as a European Trade Director on helping businesses operate uh, across Europe. Um, and basically, obviously, that includes the EU. Uh, and much of our work, obviously, is with the EU because of some of the challenges businesses have been facing. Um, we very much you know, appreciate the benefits that things like customs special procedures offer businesses. There's so many businesses, especially UK businesses, who are paying far too much in duty. Um, you know, they're not being smart about their VAT process. Uh, and therefore, you know, we're offering levels of tax efficiency in effect alongside advising companies on, on, on market research, on uh, marketing, on logistics, warehousing, you name it. But customs is an area I've studied a great deal uh, post-Brexit. Uh, I've worked for the Department of International Trade. 
Uh, I've done numerous uh, training courses with the Institute of Export, Customs Clear, uh, Customs Knowledge Institute. In fact, and you've even trained me on one of my courses. So, um, you know, I've known about your organization for a long time mm -hmm. and really respect what you do. You. And, you know, you're one of those who really waves the banner for, you know, good customs procedure. And sadly, mm -hmm. customs is something that, you know, has been an oversight for too long in the UK in particular. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's really got to change because it's the only way we can be efficient. And also HMRC are coming knocking so often now and increasingly because the UK now gets customs, all the customs duties that used to go to the EU. Mm -hmm. So now it's very much in the interest of the UK government to put resource into making sure that companies are administering their customs correctly. And sadly, that's been left too often, too often to you know, parcel operators and freight forwarders and the compliance is just not there and sadly this is going to hit a lot of businesses very very hard and this is again is what we're trying to help clients with yep. you know their, their compliance side of things yep, yep. preempting that knock on the door sounding your reception saying where's the data if you mm -hmm. don't have the data then i'm sorry you know you you've got to prove that you do not owe the um the organizations like hmrc what they say you owe. that's down to you mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't say I couldn't say anything better. Very eloquently put. So yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, maybe if we if we stick with the customs declaration software, and um, we had a bit of a chat before, and yeah, this sounds a little controversial. I know what I'm going to ask you now, but in your experience, how 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 often do you find that customs declaration software providers actually meet the brief? So the client says, "Can you find me someone who does this?" and you go out and then you spend a whole lot of time trying to find, look, talking to different people. The starting point usually is Gov UK, which we did, you know, you saw the, the video on it. And that doesn't help. It doesn't tell me exactly what this software is doing. So you need to reach out and then you spend a lot of time going back and forth to see if somebody has the solution that you want. So what's your experience with that? How, how often do you find, if I say it negatively, how often do you find that custom software providers might even fail to deliver what they promise. Is that a thing? Yes, no, it's absolutely a thing. I, I tend to find the, the larger the organization, the more guilty they are on this. Uh -huh. uh, and I have no problem with somebody coming back and, and trying to, to question me on this because um, it's absolutely a fact, you know, some of the big boys out there, um, and I've just had a major experience, if I may mention names, with, uh, with, with WiseTech and, and you know, oh. Cargo Wise, as much oh. as their, their front end lady, and I shan't name her name, has been very helpful, you know, she hasn't really understood what they can and cannot provide. And it's only long, a long way down the line do you then get the various specialists come into the uh, conversation. Um, that all takes time to happen. And, and of course, then you find out, well, they can do this and they can't do that. Um, so it's interesting, it's such as sort of customs warehousing in the UK at the moment, it's all promised by WiseTech, but they can't deliver it. Um, such as e-fulfillment, again, that's all part of, I mean, also being bombarded with promises of this fully integrated uh, customs uh, process, um, declarations, uh, special procedures. Um, it's just not being delivered. Um, so it seems very intermittent on market to market. And this was simply from the UK to the EU. This mm -hmm. is not, uh, you know, a rocket science. This is not the, anything that should be new. Um, but sadly, so often it is. And, and sometimes they can't, you know, import into certain markets with their, with their software. And I found this an awful lot. So, you know, you may be that, yes, you can go into certain markets with their software, for instance, the Netherlands or Belgium, but you can't go into France. But if you're trying to do Roro uh, yeah. across from Dover to Calais, yeah. then you're kind of scuppered really with that particular uh, company. So off we start again. It's not often, not until you get quite the way down the process. And there's only yeah. so many questions you can ask as a mm -hmm. um, you know, without sort of writing a whole plan out each time you have to try and figure out what they can and cannot do um so it's it's more the the bigger guys you know where it's it's more difficult to understand because mm -hmm. they're just totally over promising and often their salespeople do not understand what they can fully offer
that doesn't sound so good. But let me ask you, let me ask you a little bit, little bit on this. So just from my understanding, are you saying that the customer needs to slot into whatever software they have or solutions they have developed and either it fits or it doesn't, but it's not like, here is my problem. Can you give me the software that will fix it? Normally that's the client centric approach where you client says, this is my problem. Can you, can your software fix it? It, it sounds to me like it is my software does this. Would you like to take part? Is that the right approach or, or how do I, how do I feel like? Yeah. I mean, basically every single provider I've ever spoken to says that this is what I do. Um, and you, you know, follow my, you follow my. take it or leave it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's no, or, you know, I understand obviously to develop uh, software for a client's needs and individual needs is very expensive unless I was, you know, a major manufacturer and then maybe they might just think about it. But a lot of them say, well, this is what we do. And, and if that's not right for you, we'll kind of go elsewhere, basically. Um, some of the software out there is extremely restrictive. That tends to be the smaller operators, which you kind of understand. But it's clear actually what they offer, what they don't offer. So they're the guys who are easy to deal with. So many offer, you know, the world and then say, well, yes, you know, you can, you can, you can tap into our system, but you have to have the expertise internally to actually bolt other software into our system. And that, that's a massive problem yeah. because smaller businesses in particular don't have those specialists. You mm -hmm. don't know the actual costs until you start doing it. And of course, every time you connect one link to another link in terms of software systems, that's the weak point. So if ever there's a problem, there's a huge danger that these all, you know, these 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 custom software providers, um, or it may be a, a custom software provider linking into a, a warehouse uh, system, the link you provide, they can be blamed for any failures actually in the software that you're buying into. Oh. So this is where it's very, very dangerous when you're actually linking anything that isn't within your main provider. And this is why I always try and search for a, a single provider to provide the whole picture. Because as we all know, software goes wrong, we have problems. Um, so it's much better to be with one provider providing as much as possible. And that now is very much my ethos because me as a third party provider, I'm doing all this research for my clients. It's got to be right. And if we have a problem, it comes back to me. So I won't be able to knock on somebody else's door. So as soon as these providers start to say, oh, we can't do this, we can't do that, I'm invariably heading in another direction, trying to find somebody who can do these things. But that's my problem because I don't want to piece lots of different uh, softwares together. But what that... you're saying, I'm sorry for interrupting, but what you're, what you're basically saying is, you know, one can do the Netherlands, one can do France, one can do Germany, you're ending, one can do warehousing, the other one cannot. So in the end, I mean, apart from a company having multiple ERP systems internally and whatever other internal software they have, you're now telling me that in order to connect seamlessly to the world, you need multiple different customs declaration softwares, potentially. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely right. And even oh. if you want particular features such as um, custom special procedures, you know, you've got major companies of German AEB. So mm -hmm. do custom special procedures, well, well, that's the major, major benefit within customs. That's how you get your, your differentiation, your competitive mm -hmm. your advantage by, you know, understanding custom special procedures, using them properly, um, and that can save you an absolute fortune. So quite frankly, what use is a custom software system if you cannot manage or integrate new customs as special procedures? And I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that such big companies have got away without, you know, developing all these facilities. I'm proud and told it's two years off, which in software world normally means three or four years. <laughs> so it's a very strange world. And then you talk to other providers, um, such as C4T. And C4T, I really like, I love their marketing. They provide a lot of knowledge free of charge. It's really, really clever. It's, it's a very smart company. They're doing very well. Mm -hmm. um, but now, you know, you go along with a third party provider and they don't actually want to really talk to you because they just want to talk to end businesses. They don't believe in third parties anymore. So if you go along as an organization like me or even say as 3PL, you know, you're going to struggle with them. You know, they won't really want to deal with you because they just want these end parties. 
but none of this is explained on their on their website. So you get long into the conversations, not until somebody who's fairly senior comes along and then says, no, actually, you know, you're not an end party or you can't immediately guarantee us X amount of volume. Um, mm. Because every, everybody's hunting for a huge amount of immediate volume. And, you know, we all know with SMEs, they start as acorns, you know, they then grow into the red trees. But again, you know, the ability for small businesses, and I keep on batting about SMEs because that's my background for 21 years, importing, mm-hmm. exporting it as an SME before I became a particular advisor on, on mm-hmm. customers internationally. Mm-hmm. They are so restricted as to what, who they can tap into, mm-hmm. um, given their fairly limited volumes. Yeah. Um, and I, I I do worry that a lot are going to sort of not do the research that that, that I do um, as part of my team, and basically are going to sign up for things, and they're not going to know what they've signed up for, and they suddenly realise this they they've not got the service that they thought they were buying into. Hey. Welcome to part two of my interview with Dale Fletcher. Now, as you know, if you watched part one, we are having a really, really intense conversation, good conversation, insightful conversation about the landscape of customs declaration software. And actually, Dale is talking about more than just declarations. He's talking about, well, in a way, you know, technology, use of technology and software um, in, in as a whole. So he's talking about special procedures. He's talking about how do we deal with software in the context of customs warehousing and and in what processing and the likes of it. So we're going to continue this trend and this very insightful conversation with Dale Fletcher in my second part. And I hope you like it today. We're going to talk about vendor responsiveness and real world applications. So I hope you enjoy. So here's my second part. And don't forget, it just starts, boom. Um, because we've we stopped the interview, you know, in, in after 20 minutes or so, because it was getting a little long. So I'm just introducing the second part, which starts right now.